In this video, we are going to talk about the Banana Belt of Colorado. Webster defines Banana Belt as a warm region usually used in an exaggerated or facetious way to refer to a relatively warm area and a region known for its cold climate. Over the years, the term has become ambiguous enough that it can be used to describe everything from the entire Antarctic Peninsula to microclimates of mountain ranges such as the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. This term has no scientific affiliation and is basically used by the travel industry to attract tourists. The overall climate of Colorado was cool and dry with large seasonal and day to night swings in temperature. The average annual temperature for the state is 43.5 degrees Fahrenheit and the average statewide precipitation is 17 inches. The local climates are greatly influenced by elevation and orientation of mountain ranges and valleys with respect to airflow. This can cause large variations over short distances. The average temperature of Pikes Peak, which is at over 14,000 feet for instance, is 35 degrees Fahrenheit lower than Las Animas, which is only 90 miles southwest and over 10,000 feet closer to sea level. That is about the same difference between Florida and Iceland. The eastern plains of Colorado have relatively uniform climates, low humidity, profuse sunshine, intermittent precipitation, high wind movement, and large daily and seasonal temperature swings. At altitudes of 5,000 feet and below, it is common for summit temperatures to reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest temperatures in Colorado occur in the Arkansas River Valley, which we will find later in this discussion to be the heart of the banana belt. The western slope of Colorado is less mountainous with lower elevations and combinations of canyons and plateaus. Elevation and topography remain the foremost drivers of local climates, with precipitation gradually decreasing and temperature gradually increasing as you continue west to the Utah border. As with the eastern plains of Colorado, the temperatures can exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit several times each summer at elevations below 5,000 feet. The main driver of these warmer and drier climates is the orographic lift that occurs when the westerly winds reach the Rockies. This is when air mass is forced from low elevation to higher elevations. As the air mass rises, it cools down adiabatically. This increases humidity and creates clouds. While this air mass is cooling and drying, it will release most of its moisture as rain or snow. This now dry air mass moves down the eastern side of the mountain and begins to warm. This increase in air mass temperature is more rapid during the winter months, resulting in what is known as Chinook winds, and can quickly raise temperatures by 50 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Utilizing time series data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, I created four maps to show average temperature and precipitation by county and climate region. This first map shows the average temperature for each county from 1895 to 2020. The Rocky Mountains lay within the counties just left of center of the state and make up the coldest climates of Colorado. High elevation is the main driver for the colder temperatures. To the northwest of the Rockies, you see slightly warmer temperatures that increase as you move south into the valleys and plateaus of the western slope. The lee side of the mountains show a much more distinctive change as the orographic lift of the westerly winds brings warm air to the eastern counties. The headwaters for the Arkansas River run from Lake County through Chaffee County before it reaches the lower elevations of Fremont County, where you see one of the largest variances between neighboring counties at 7.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you exit the Bighorn Sheep Canyon to the east in Fremont County, the landscape becomes flat and elevation gradually drops from around 5,000 feet to around 3,000 feet in the southeast corner where we see the warmest temperatures in the state. This next map shows the average precipitation by county from 1895 to 2020. The counties that lie within the Rocky Mountains show much higher average annual precipitation than the rest of the state. Northwest of the mountains, precipitation drops drastically and continues to drop almost uniformly going south. The exceptions are Garfield and Dolores counties, whose eastern portions consist of high peak mountains shared with neighboring counties, skewing the representation of the western portion. I was unable to locate data for municipalities to more accurately depict the banana belt. Chafee and Lake counties have two small towns, Salida and Buena Vista, that fall victim to a similar skew in this map. The great majority of these counties are high elevation mountain ranges. Salida and Buena Vista, however, find themselves in cozy valleys that afford them the same effects of orographic lift that their neighbors not far east receive. This skew becomes even more prevalent when the averages are divided up by climate divisions. These last two maps show the standardized anomalies by county for temperature and precipitation. As you can see, both maps illustrate high anomalies where the Rockies and the Eastern Plains are located. This coincides with the unpredictable nature of the climates in the plains and the high elevation mountain peaks. 
the ranges just west and east of the mountains display very moderate anomalies, coinciding with more inert climates. From Denver to Pueblo to Buena Vista, everyone boasts being within the banana belt. The south central and southeastern portion of the state, however, are most deserving of the title in my opinion. The variances are much greater over shorter distances and the southern region's culture is more centered around agriculture, which I believe makes even more of a case for undisputed banana belt claims.